Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back today to do my December reading wrap up. And I have completed reading eight things this month. The first thing I finished was Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno, one of the contestants in the self-published science fiction contest and I have done a full spoiler free review so I'm going to link that up in the cards. This is about a young man named Lavort Atra who is a prospector and really wants to go explore the universe and finds a way to do so but finds some challenges as well and I'll send you to my single review if you want to know more. I then read To Sail Beyond the Botnet by Suzanne Palmer and this is her novella that just came out last year. I think it came out at Clark's World. So Palmer has written a series of stories with Bot 9 before, and this is just the newest installment. And then this one, Bot 9, wakes up in its fabricator and realizes that it is no longer in ship and it has to figure out what's going on and has to go through its logic systems to be like, why would ship put me outside of ship and all of that information. So it puts things together and then goes on an adventure to save ship again. It's a very, very cute series, especially if you like sci-fi and you like quirky AI. This is a series to read. And like I said, I think the first two installments are either short stories or novelettes. This one's just a novella. And then because I really like Suzanne Palmer, I went ahead and read some more by her. I then read The Sadness Box, which is a novelette. And this is a following a young boy at kind of going into the teenager years about the age where you start to realize all the foibles and problems your parents have and you're trying to figure out how that relates to you and so this young boy is visiting his father who is an inventor and the inventor shows him this little box that he calls the sadness box and he's so proud that this AI in this box has to be sad and the little boy irritated with with his father steals it and then the little boy tries his best to make the AI in the box happy and you get the boy's perspective and then you get a little bit of the AI as the AI is kind of learning the world around it and then this is set in a post-apocalypse world where there's bio warfare going on and the boy is basically living in a war zone. So that is just kind of layered on as well. And then I reread 33% Joe. This is, I think, one of my favorite stories by Suzanne Palmer. This is about a soldier named Joe who doesn't die in battle, and so he gets cybernetic replacements. And some of his cybernetic replacements are what they call intelligent or smart. So they have AIs directing them. They end up caring about Joe, and it's in their own best interest to make sure that Joe survives and Joe can have a happier life. It's a very, very sweet story. I then read System Collapse by Martha Wells. This was my number one you know, most anticipated read of the year because I love me Murderbot. And this picks up immediately after Network Effect, which was the novel. And I think I just hadn't remembered a lot of the novel. I probably needed to go back and reread it before jumping into this because I felt a little bit off or not as connected with the Murderbot story as I normally am. And I think this is the first Murderbot that I gave under five stars to, even though Artificial Condition is still my least favorite. So in this one, they're still at the same planet that where they were in Network Effect, and they're working with the colonists, trying to find out which ones want to become refugees and, and helping them to claim their planet. And during this process, they find out there is a second hidden colony. And then the big bad corporation that is trying to take the colonists in as indentured servants, which made basically in this world, if you're an indentured servant, you're essentially a slave. So there is conflict where Murderbot's group is trying to convince colonists that it's in their best interest to do one thing, and the other group is trying to say, oh, if you come with us, we'll give you job opportunities. Still really enjoyed it. Still will own it one day. Then I 
found out that there was a short story that Martha Wells had written called Home, Habitat, Range, Niche, and Territory, set in the Murderbot universe. Oh, I think originally it was something that if you pre-ordered Network Effect, you got the story. However, it is now up on Tor.com, so that's how I read it. And this is the first story where we are not in Murderbot's head. We are actually in Mensa's head. And the story is set right after Mensa has been rescued and has returned to preservation space. And, you know, Mensa's trying to process everything that has happened to her. And people are saying, hey, you should go to therapy. And she doesn't think she wants to do therapy. And then she's reevaluating her relationship with Murderbot seeing how protective Murderbot is of her. And that really, I know, does go into some decisions leading into Network Effect. Yes, kind of like a prequel short story before Network Effect. And then I read Prompt Excursion by Lewis S. Kingston. This was another of our self-published science fiction contest reads. Really great to me. It's like a hard sci-fi space opera adventure sort of thing. And this follows Johansson, who her spacesuit wakes her up at the beginning, and then she finds that she has short-term memory loss. She can remember, like, being trained for her job and those skills, but she doesn't remember what happened, why she is in the situation she is, why her suit's broken and she has a concussion, or why the ship is malfunctioning. So then we go through Johansson's journey as we figure out what is going on and peel back the layers uh, like an onion a little at a time and they might make you cry. I also have a single review for this one and I will link that in the cards as well. And then the last thing I finished in the month of December was Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry and I'm not sure if you would say that this is a prequel to Legends and Lattes. But this is definitely an earlier story of Viv. This is where Viv has just recently started her mercenary journey, much younger, and she has injured her leg, and so her crew is on a mission to hunt down an evil necromancer, but she's not mobile, and so they leave her in this seaside town of Merc. She's frustrated with this because she's so used to being the capable one and getting through and doing things, and she learns while being here how to form connections with people, try new things, and realize that her life might not always be a, being a mercenary, and that might be okay. She realizes right now this is what she wants, is to be a mercenary, but she's now open to things in the future, which then explains why she was qu willing to quit being a mercenary in the beginning of Legends and Lattes. So this was a lot of fun. A little more high stakes than Legends and Lattes, or at least I think maybe a little bit more action. It's still a cozy fantasy, so you still get those nice vibes, and in this one you get to help fix up a bookshop. I think Fern, who is the ratkin, is funny. Fern has a very big potty mouth, which, being married to an ex-soldier, I'm actually used to that. But it cracked me up the first time when this mild-mannered looking character started cussing for the first time. However, it was a lot of fun. I think there was really only one qualm I had with this book, and that was towards the finale. They played a bait and switch with the reader, and it it didn't work for me. I would have preferred a little more hint of what was going on, if that makes sense. I know I'm trying not to spoil it though, <laughs> but yeah, so this was the last thing I finished in the month of December. <laughs> Still working on Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This hasn't been a priority read, and it's a chunky boy, so it, it's going, going slow. I have started Dead Theory by Wick Welker, which is another of my self-published science fiction contest reads. This is also a chunker. I am about a third of the way through, hoping to get a lot of reading time this weekend so that I can finish it probably on the 1st of January. And then as a possible TBR for the rest of the month of January, the first two of these books are my the other two books I have to read for the self-published science fiction contest because we're supposed to turn in our scores, I think, on the 17th of January. So I have Bloodletting, Aria of the Forgotten by Sean Thomas 
and I have Mortal Mission by Pit Skinner. And then, as I had a video a few weeks ago, which I'll also link in the cards, These Books Might Explode, where I went through and chose 12 books to read in 2024. I asked people what they thought. I have had two people vote for this one. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. So this is the other book that I'm going to start in the month of January and hope to finish in January as well. So that's kind of my potential TBR pile of possibilities sort of thing. December's been good, and the next videos that you'll be seeing from me will be my favorite novels and novellas, then my favorite short stories, novelettes, graphic novels, and then my favorite nonfiction of the year. And I think I will throw in some stats as well so that you can kind of see how my reading's been going. Thank you, and have a great day!